United States Army watercraft have proven to be a strategic asset for projecting the force in the Persian Gulf. They can operate in shallow water, unimproved ports, and their flat bottoms give them the ability to land, drop their ramp, and roll equipment on and off of a beachhead. They can move squad and platoon size elements because of their size. These vessels give the U.S. Army Central Command the flexibility to project the force by delivering warfighting supplies and equipment. And so that provides the Arsene and the CENTCOM commander with the capability to project assets and project power in a much greater range. It allows us to move forces, to move capabilities, and to answer a real, really a full uh, spectrum of operations. Everything from disaster relief, where we can get into austere locations, or say a port's been devastated by hurricanes or typhoons or earthquakes, the Army watercraft provides DOD with a reliable way to haul a fair amount of cargo into an austere or an unimproved location and, and offload it directly where it's needed, whether that's disaster relief supplies, whether that's artillery batteries, whether that's air defense batteries, whether that's combat power. So we we're, we're, it gives the, uh, gives the commanders over here flexibility. The Army currently utilizes four vessels in theater, two Runnymede class landing craft utility vessels, or LCUs. An LCU has a basic crew of 13 and can transport a mechanized infantry platoon's equipment and C2 structure. The two larger logistic support vessels, or LSVs, are the Besson class LSV with its fixed ramp and flat bow, and a Corota class LSV with its distinctive rounded bow and longer folding ramp. The biggest difference that you'll notice visually on this vessel as opposed to the Besson class is the bow ramp system. We actually deploy the ramp, whereas the Besson class, you just drop the ramp. We've got 15 more feet of length in our ramp, so we can get a dry ramp a lot easier than the Besson class. The LSVs have a basic crew of 32 and can project a battery minus of paladins with one LSV or a full battery of paladins with two. The range of these vessels help project the force by routinely visiting ports throughout the Persian Gulf, in Bahrain, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, and through the Strait of Hormuz to Amman. The LSVs can make the trip around the Arabian Peninsula to Aqaba, Jordan, as well. These versatile watercraft can load equipment one of two ways. Equipment can be loaded by crane, or these flat bottom vessels can land on a beachhead and conduct roll on, roll off operations so that a mechanized infantry platoon or artillery battery can drive its vehicles and equipment onto the vessel, which increases the amount of locations the commander can deploy their assets. So it's about getting to the location, making your approach, uh, dropping the ramp, discharging the cargo, uh, and helping the, uh, the warfighter get to the fight. That's what we do. In the Transportation Corps, that's what the Transportation Corps is all about, is getting, getting the equipment to the fight, because you can't fight it if you don't have the equipment. Army watercraft work with the U.S. Navy on a regular basis while underway. The Navy is a valuable asset for Army vessels when any type of support is necessary. I have a great sense of security for our vessels whenever they are out in the water. So I know that whenever our vessels are out in the theater, anywhere in the Arabian Gulf, Gulf of Oman, wherever they are in the CENTCOM AOR, the Deseron 50, NAV sent, the Navy is overwatching our vessels and has positive control of where they are. So in case they run into some sort of uh, danger or threat, the Navy is able to flex their boats to help out our vessels at a moment's notice. This theater is covered extremely well by the U.S. Navy, and uh, we're under their blanket of protection for the entire uh, length of the Persian Gulf and even outside the Strait of Hormuz, which is comforting, to say the least. These Army watercraft have supported various exercises throughout late 2012 and the early part of 2013. Routinely, Army watercraft support Army combat diver certification and training dives. The LCU serve as a platform for the diver's life support equipment, while the bow ramp works as an entrance and an exit point for the divers. Lucky Valiant took place in October of 2012. Its objective was to transport Abrams tanks from a U.S. Army Armored Brigade combat team by vessel while communicating with AH-64 Apache helicopters that provided close air support. In January of 2013, Spartan Mariner showed that the four-vessel Army watercraft fleet in Kuwait 
can support assets from an armored brigade combat team as a unit while a Kuwaiti Coast Guard cutter escorted the convoy. It was a four-day exercise that involved transportation, artillery, armor, infantry, army watercraft, and our Kuwaiti partners. Spartan Mariner demonstrated how these strategic assets are versatile enough to support transportation, life support, and combat assets. Spartan Mariner was the first of its kind in that we had done a, an, an emergency readiness and deployment exercise to test combat power, being able to load onto the boats and offload, but we hadn't really thought as far as how would we tactically employ them, how would we uh, expand their maneuver capability by projecting them forward and then letting them maneuver from there into whatever battle space that they have to face the enemy. It really demonstrated that we could alert uh, forces here, we could roll them out, we could tactically load them and their crews and then be able to project them forward. Future exercises are going to look at possibly projecting artillery so we can increase the range uh, of protective fires uh, in the region. We could also project air defense so we could expand the air defense umbrella over critical assets in the Gulf. But we could also uh, expand aviation by hauling vast amounts of ammunition and fuel uh, to a forward operator or a forward area refueling point and extend their range. So US Army watercraft and Spartan Mariner demonstrated that we can really take the capabilities that are resident here in RSAN or could be moved into the RSAN AOR and project them forward and extend their range uh, with four humble Army, Army watercraft. Army watercraft get support from various Army units, such as a provisional watercraft company, a THOD, and an Army dive team. The provisional watercraft company supports the watercraft fleet by being a one-stop administrative shop. By having the provisional company uh, in play, we provide an umbrella for the vessels. It says, hey, you have one focal point that you need to communicate to. And by doing that, that, that gives them a sense of community uh, and a sense of belonging. Before they were out as their own free electrons, if you will, they are now constantly looking out for each other and they constantly have been working well together to ensure the success of each other's vessel. So it's not I'm looking out for myself, it's I'm looking out for my brother as well. The Theater Harbor Master Operations Detachment, or THOD, provides 24-hour operational control for Army vessels conducting intra-theater lift, water terminal, inland waterway, joint amphibious, and logistics over the shore operations. The THOD is the S3 section and they do a lot of the operations planning for the vessels. So they will make sure the vessels have their sailing orders and make sure that the vessels have the proper cargo manifest uh, and that the, all of their safety checks are all done before they set sail. They are by far and away the greatest force multiplier that I have as the original company commander. One, zero, three! The Army combat divers support Army watercraft by providing pier and hull inspections, underwater security sweeps, and assessment of potential beaching locations. We do a variety of things. The most common thing we do would be what's called ship's husbandry, which would involve underwater inspection, cleaning, and minor repair on all the parts of the ship that are underwater. We're only limited by our own imaginations. I've always said that doctrine should be guidance, not gospel. So I don't think we should ever be limited by doctrine. It's a good starting point, but we know the Army has always been successful when we've had leaders and soldiers who thought outside of the box. Folks who have uh, you know, invented things on the spot or modified things on the spot. And I think we're really modifying our doctrine here by showing that we're, what we're capable of doing. It really gives us an opportunity to move into the littoral, the coastlines, and project whatever capabilities we need, whether it's humanitarian relief, whether it's combat power, whether it's combat uh, or, you know, fires. So uh, Army watercraft are tremendously versatile, and I think it's time that people started, A, appreciating it, but B, also exploring just what the limits need to be. So I think if we push the boundaries, we can do a lot with Army watercraft in the future. <laughs>